Minister. So uh, you issued that statement on Friday. It was signed by you. Um, it must have been difficult for you to release that statement. No, it's um, a normal um, part of my job to articulate to the Republic the decisions of the government and sometimes the president. And it is in that line that we put that out. Following from that statement, I'm sure you've monitored social media reactions coming in from uh, a section of Ghanaians, including your political opponents. Um, you must be embarrassed by this decision. No. The reasons that have brought us here are quite clear. If you look at uh, the performance of Ghana's economy between 2017 and 2019, um, yes, there were still some structural challenges in Ghana's economy, but the economy was performing way better based on the, in particular, the fiscal and monetary policy measures and the broader economic policy measures that the administration was rolling out. And so the results were that we're growing better, inflation was going down, interest rates were going down, um, we're having the opportunity to create some more jobs and some more development programs in the economy. In 2020, that stopped. That stopped primarily because our economy, still with its challenges, was hit by a major external factor, not just our economy, many economies around the world. In 2021, we started a path to recovery. So you notice that in 2021, even though we had depleted a good chunk of our buffers and our reserves, we were still now building back better, uh, trying to rebuild our reserves and trying to get the economy back on track. And then the first part of 2022, I think in February, um, you had what occurred in the Black Sea area, giving the world another major crisis. Now uh, there's a high food price all over the world, high fuel prices, high cost of financing. And it is biting the Ghanaian a lot. Do you have the domestic buffers still to respond to them? You don't. You are now just trying to recover and rebuild. And so if you look at all your options, despite the initial thinking that you could rebuild those buffers domestically, the president has decided that it's important we start engaging with the fund with the possibility of getting a balance of payments support from them to help us rebuild our buffers and better mitigate what's happening around the world and happening here in Ghana as well. Ordinarily, this should have been a normal thing because we are members of the International Monetary Fund. Don't you think that the only reason we've had this sort of reaction is because of what you did, what your party did uh, then in opposition and how you reacted to uh, John Mahama and his decision to go to the IMF? I believe that that is a good reason for which a lot of people are asking questions. Um, and there are answers for that. I think we have been clear that when you self-induce a crisis and then you have to go to the fund for a balance of payment supported program, then it raises questions about the way you are managing fiscal policy, monetary policy and the broader economy. But this is not a situation in which you have a self-induced crisis. That is why, for example, uh, from 2020, about half of the world's countries are applying to the fund for some support. It is not to say that all of the people who manage all of these over 100 economies um, do not know how to go about their job. But it is evidence of the fact that something external, something exogenous has hit. That is why today Egypt, um, Kenya, um, I understand Tunisia is just even applying for um, uh, some sort of um, support. Are all, all of these countries are asking for support. Well, that was because we failed to uh, sign up to the DSSI because we had the opportunity in 2020, uh, which was provided us by the IMF uh, through the G20 process. It was a decision at the time. And today we find ourselves in a space where the buffers that we had built are being eroded and therefore we need to get some help to rebuild them. But Mr. Pumper, why is it so difficult for government and its elements to accept responsibility also for the IMF, for this step that we've taken? Why, why are you blaming everything on, on external fact, factors? Well, the facts speak for themselves. Mm. Check the data. Yes. 2017 to 2019, mm. what was the data saying? You didn't have to necessarily You did a fantastic job a managing the economy, of course. Program. Um, inflation two was times in single that you've digits. Had to do that. The two times you've had to mm. do that are the two times when external factors have hit you. Mm. And it is fair for the administration to explain that, yes, we are taking this decision, 
but we are taking this decision because of these exogenous factors that have hit us. I understand the team from International Monetary Fund uh, will be in town uh, next week uh, to begin uh, negotiations. Uh, what should we expect? Well, first of all, we, in March, put out um, a program to mitigate the impact of the second crisis on the Ghanaian. In the last one, we've been doing a lot of assessments on how well it has worked. The homegrown policies? Um, I haven't used those expressions. What has happened after that is that we are of the view that we need to have an enhanced economic program that deals with more than just those specific issues that we had raised. And that program needs to be funded from various sources. You need domestic resources to fund that program. And that's why you have instruments like the electronic transfers, levy, uh, VAT, property rates, other things, seeking to raise domestic resources to fund that program. Then you need money from the international capital markets whose access is a bit difficult now because we've been downgraded. But we've at least got about a billion uh, dollars in Parliament that we are hoping to pass and add to the resources we have to fund the program to improve the conditions of our people. And then you are also looking for a concessional facility uh, like uh, what we'll be discussing with the fund to add uh, to that. So it's a mix of resources that are coming in to fund our enhanced economic uh, program and we are hopeful uh, that will be successful in that area. Uh, some have said the precarious nature of our economy uh, is likely to make these negotiations a bit more protracted. Uh, the fact that we are in a crisis situation, you think so? Negotiations are negotiations. We are looking forward to an opportunity to sit with um, the ladies and gentlemen of the fund and show them our enhanced domestic uh, program and explain to them why we believe that we need their resourcing in some particular areas to assist us uh, on the balance of payment side, which also translates into currency stability, some bit uh, of macro stability, and would improve a bit of liquidity for the fiscals as well. How do you respond to uh, internationally acclaimed economists like uh, Steve Hank uh, when he suggests that this IMF program that government is about to enter into is going to feel like uh, previous 70 other programs we had in, with the International Monetary Fund. But the IMF balance of payment support will not transform your economy. I think I've been clear. Agree, it yeah. will provide you, no, I don't agree with him that it will fail. Words are important. Mm. The IMF balance of payment facility will provide you with some um, forex which will support your currency, which will improve liquidity on the fiscal side. But you need a broader program that responds to other bigger questions in the economy unemployment, dealing with social protection programs, inflation, for example, stimulating the real sector of the economy to grow. It's not going to be the IMF that will do that for you. And that is why you put on the table an enhanced program with clarity on how to do all of these things and you invite the fund, the capital markets, citizens to all fund various parts of the program. Many have also suggested that this will not be the solution to uh, Ghana's problems and that there are deeper cracks that as a country and as a nation we need to deal with. You need the fund to help you on one side. And we are clear that's what we are talking to them about. But I'm also saying that anybody who says that the fund coming in will not solve all our economic problems mm. is actually stating an obvious fact. Mm. Because we ourselves have already said that the fund is being invited to come in to help us with about two pillars of our program. Mm. There are many other parts of our program that we need to work on with citizens, with domestic resources, collaboration with um, private sector in particular, uh, collaboration with friendly nations, etc. So it's a whole basket. So if we don't tackle the structure of our economy, this balance of payment supports wouldn't... You're very right. That is why we have said that we're putting on the table an enhanced economic program, which has about just two parts that require the fund to come in. The monetary side, and it will translate into some help on the fiscal side. But you have a broader economy that you need to deal with. You need to be able to stimulate a lot of resources or put a lot of resources, particularly into industry, which would ensure that there's more productivity of goods and services for export to earn a lot of hard currency, which would translate into an improvement in your balance of trade and your balance of payment on your own. Then you don't require the fund or anybody coming in to support you on the balance of payment side. Now, when it comes to industry, what have we been doing since we came to power? We rolled out a one district, one factory program. We've been aggressive on the Africa continental free trade. These are the elements of what you need to bring about that transformation of the Ghanaian economy. We've uh, rolled out the integrated um, iron and steel industry, the Ghana integrated aluminium 
um, you know, enterprise to be able to build stronger value chains to produce more and export more, earn more foreign exchange, bring it in. At the same time, creates more jobs, makes more incomes available for people. One of the challenges that you have is finding the resources to stimulate these initiatives. We live in a country where at the end of the day, no matter what you say, tax to GDP ratio is where? Around 12%. And you put in place measures to raise more revenue, which measures end up over and over again being obstructed. And I think that's important we have a clear conversation that we cannot continue to obstruct the revenue generation measures of government, complain about government borrowing, and expect that out of somewhere, resources will still... Okay, don't mind me. Yeah. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I get you. Yes. Okay. Please. So you can start from anywhere. Okay. So um, this is what we need to do. And since we came into office as an administration, what we've been doing is to invest in an industrial development program with the 1D1F program, be very aggressive about the Africa continental trade agenda so that trade can be um, you know, expanded there. Because we also create incomes, create jobs for our people. But at the end of the day, you need resources to come into these government programs to make it happen. Do you fear there might be a possible freeze on a lot of our flagship programs like free SHS, one district, one factory, with the coming into force of an IMF program? We expect some very frank negotiations and it will determine where we are going on those programs. Some have said, a lot of economists have said that even prior to 2020, the economy was already in crisis. I mean, when you look at our debt to GDP ratio, clearly uh, we were in for difficult times ahead. Our debt to GDP ratio mm -hmm. went out of the roof in 2020. Mm -hmm. In 2017, 2018, 2019, mm -hmm. that was not the challenge. Well, well, Even in 2021, mm -hmm. when the returns, if I, by 2022, when the returns on 2021 came in, mm -hmm. it became obvious that our debt to GDP ratio was even better than being advertised. Mm -hmm. So I think that we have to be that was honest. You had we had to be reprofiling where you had separated the financial No, no, it's COVID. because growth was better than had been predicted. But I think that we have to be clear with our facts that mm. the Ghanaian economy mm. had challenges but was doing better. I'm surprised that we're trying to debate or dispute that. The Ghanaian economy had challenges mm. but was doing better between 2017 and 2019. Mm. A number of exogenous factors, and it shocks me that people want to wash it away, a number of exogenous factors have come together to exacerbate our challenges. What we now need to do is to come together as a people and address these challenges. Not because I am NDC, I will deliberately obstruct the administration's efforts to tackle it and turn around and campaign with it. You keep you know, blaming the Russia-Ukraine crisis, the COVID-19 for our current woes. But Dr. Balmian is one of our outstanding lectures. In fact, in his recent lecture had suggested that the COVID crisis alone could not have been the reason for our twin, for, for our 15% fiscal deficit in 2020. He's talking about what is in the normal scheme of things and what is not in the normal scheme of things. And even if you take the financial service crisis that the administration, the new administration had to respond to, we know the antecedents of that uh, crisis. The administration decided to take the bull by the horn and rescue the deposits of all of these depositors, about 21 billion. That was not in the normal scheme of expenditure. Mm -hmm. So the vice president explains the things out of the normal scheme of expenditure that has occasioned a blowing up of our deficit. I think he's well in order to do that.